This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Branded to Kill, a Japanese action movie from 1967, directed by Seijun Suzuki. It follows a highly ranked hitman named Goro, who is initially brought to Tokyo to assist a former hitman's return to the profession by escorting a client from one location to another. A task which not only sees the former hitman's death, but the deaths of several other high-ranked killers. Goro ends up encountering a mysterious woman named Misako afterwards, who contracts him for a hit which goes wrong, causing him to lose his rank and be marked for death. Hiding out, he must now find a way to save his own skin, leading him down a tangled road of death and deception, and eventually a showdown with the top-ranked hitman, whose unexpected and unorthodox methods may be Koro's ultimate undoing. Story-wise, the movie is a bit scattered, maybe even episodic. There's a coherent through-line and an ongoing series of events, but they come in chapters of sorts, with minor segues and connections between the major story points. It's tied together well enough that the seams aren't noticeable, but when you think about it, the film's major acts seem as if they were written separately. The story almost feels a bit absurdist in a way, taking the time to create new twists or introduce weird character traits, if only for the sake of weirdness. There's little in the way of theming in the story or character allegories, putting the focus entirely on actions and roles and whatever it is that happens, which simplifies things a lot and makes things pretty easy to follow with the end results similar in style to a kind of pulp fiction novel made more for sensational events and ideas than telling a complex story. On a basic level, it's simultaneously intriguing, thrilling, and silly. And most of all, everything that actually happens is still a delight to see play out. But on a larger scale, it could have honed in on one of those three to make something more cohesive in its tone. Style-wise, Branded to Kill definitely puts all its chips on the table here. Where the story has its gaps, the movie patches them up with a slick visual presence that adds another layer of weirdness to the production. Embracing artificial or constructed elements of the set, or framing a scene in a specific manner to emphasize style over substance. Almost every choice in cinematography feels deliberate, sometimes for the sake of just looking cool, but more often than not, building up character through visual storytelling and symbolism. Especially in the case of Misako, as we spend most of the film in her apartment, which is covered in dead butterflies that almost seem to layer the frame as she and Goro move around them. The location gets put to work later in the movie, as Goro's paranoia causes far-off buildings seen through windows to inch closer and closer until they are almost right next to him. That's only a few examples, since the attention to visual stylization and exaggeration is something that's easier to see for yourself than for me to describe. The same pretty much applies to everything technical, which definitely goes to show how much of the production seems to have been dedicated to pure style, even at the cost of story depth. It still has plenty to offer, regardless of whether or not you prefer story or substance. I mean, style or story. Whatever. Branded to Kill. Seijun Suzuki, 1967. Four stars. I'd recommend giving it a watch. 
it's definitely something you'll want to look at, of course. That's it for me. If you like this review, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I had a bit of trouble writing this one, honestly. I really need to remember how to over-explain things. That's how I got through all my English courses in school, after all.